Hello, uh, hi everybody. Uh, I am Angel Garcia Fernandez from Cordoba, Argentina. We're going to, to talk about uh, pelvic floor exercises and continence in neurogenic bowel day function. First, I want to acknowledge Dr. Melina Longoni. This invitation uh, is a real uh, honor for me. Neurogenic bowel diet function is a major physical and psychological problem for persons with spinal cord injury. As changes in bowel motility, sphincter control, coupled with impaired mobility and dexterity and obesity result to make bowel management a, a major life limiting problem. The symptoms of neurogenic bowel dysfunction function comprise constipation and fecal incontinence. This has a major impact on quality of life and dignity. In fact, they are two sides of the same coin. The primary aims of bowel care are twofold, to achieve bowel evacuation in a timely manner and to avoid fecal incontinence. The symptoms of neurogenic bowel dysfunction function comprise constipation and fecal incontinence. These have a major impact on quality of life and dignity. In fact, there are two sides of the same coin. The primary aims of bowel care are twofold, to achieve bowel evacuation in a timely manner and to avoid fecal incontinence. Current symptoms should be assessed in clearing frequency of bowel motions, stool con consistency with the Bristol stool scale, episodes of fecal or flatus incontinence or urgency. There is a clear need for a better evidence base with comparison of different bowel regimens according to pattern and severity of neurogenic bowel day function. Although the pathophysiology of bowel symptoms varies between the patient groups, treatment options are frequently identical. The evidence base for managing neurogenic blood bowel, bowel day function is limited. So individual centers tend to run their own bowel management program according to what expertise is locally available rather than necessarily any objective evidence. Pelvic floor rehabilitation is a term which comprises many different therapeutic approaches, including, but not limited to, electromyography biofeedback, guided pelvic floor muscle training, which is currently the most widely used rehabilitative treatment modality. Some data from Biblio, there is uh, a level one evidence from one good quality RCT that external electrical stimulation of the abdominal wall muscle can improve bowel management for individuals with tetraplegia. There is level four evidence that posterior tibial nerve stimulation improves bowel management for those with incomplete spinal cord injury. Biofeedback therapy is a term that can be used to describe many different types of training regimens of the pelvic floor. Biofeedback is defined as the process of gaining greater awareness for of many physiological functions, primary using instruments that provide information on the activity of those same systems with a goal of being able to manipulate them at will. The first treatment modality, data are recorded either from surface electrodes or via the use of intravaginal or intrarectal sensors. Other forms of pelvic floor biofeedback include the use of ultrasound, either intrarectal, intravaginal, or perineal, rectal balloons, digital uh, guidance, the use of intrarectal, intravaginal finger, or hand places on the perineum, and anorectal manometry. We utilize vaginoscopy too. The second treatment modality is to use biofeedback as, as electrostimulation and electrostimulation to improve rectal sensitivity, sensitivity, sensitivity sorry, or compliance. The third biofeedback approach deals with coordination training of the anal sphincter. 
Multiple balloons are again inserted, uh, a large one in the rectum itself, and one or two smaller ones in the anal cavity. They are typically connected to a manometric pressure recording device. What we do uh, is uh, uh, we release only one balloon to do the exercises of retention and evacuation. Our protocol for approaching neurogenic uh, bowel first, valorate proprioception status by AMG, intravaginal or intrarectal sensitive parameters of electrostimulation, reinforcing parameters treating pelvic floor weakness and retention expulsion balloon to uh, stimulate the coordination via feedback. Predictors of success with pelvic floor rehabilitation. There have only been a few studies which have looked at which types of patients with most likely benefit from a rehabilitative approach to treatment for amyloid dysfunction. Good sphincter function and mild to moderate symptomatology are considered as more favorable prognostic factors. Thank you very much. Uh,